Hi everyone and welcome to Social Live. We've got a big show for you today, but I can tell you I am so tired, Courtney. It was a rough night last night. Jules. <laughs> I didn't know Jules was there. I didn't know Jules was already on yet. I thought we were oh, gonna pan out oh, for Jules. Sorry, I didn't realize. I'm here, well, Jules is here. That. So Steph, tell me why you're so tired. I'll tell I'll tell Jules. I don't know. Know. I'll tell you. So for those of you who fell asleep early last night, the season premiere of This Is Us was on on NBC and I was watching the show, trying not to get emotional, trying to just like take a step back and remember it's just a TV show until the very end of the show when they finally revealed how Jack died and everyone in the background, you guys can't see, everyone's closing their ears right now. I'm not going to spoil it. Oops, I think you just did. No, they no. know, they oh, know that he died. Okay. I don't watch this show, yeah. so I don't really know what's going on, but a lot of people do, like you. And it was trending on Twitter last night. I was following along on the NBC This Is Us uh, Twitter account, watching the reactions of everyone, and I don't think there have ever been more crying memes posted on Twitter at the same time than at about 9.57 p.m last night. I feel like I need to pick up where I left off because I stopped watching after I left and came back on in January and I haven't Wait, how many up. seasons have there been? It's only the one season. Yeah, for a new show to watch. They've got so many Emmy nominations. Okay, you can binge watch This Is Us and then we'll have a follow up uh, next Wednesday and All we right. can I'll do talk about that. it. That's, that's a few, that's Just a do me a favor. Hours. The first episode I, you may love it, you may not like it for after the first episode, just give it till at least episode three and you'll then really start to, and Pietra's nodding in the background, do you agree? Anyway. Yes, okay. I think it's cheesy. Now, <laughs> Jules, thanks for your opinion, <laughs> of course, but this fine. is about my opinion about This Is Us right now, not yours. Ooh, Ooh yeah. Well, let's talk well, about another... Well, I was going to say, okay. speaking of TV and using social media, this past week, uh, we were on the, the panel at Adweek talking all about TV shows using social media not only to attract new viewers but also to keep the conversation going and I can tell you This Is Us did a great job, props to NBC, they've really, really engaged fans. What did they do? They're just all over social media posting their reactions, having conversations with each other and people become all of the very... Actors? Well, the actors are tweeting too. A lot of them live tweet, but it's people like like you, like you guys, like the little people, like us, <laughs> like little, connecting exactly, with each other. Exactly. And for those of you who who don't know, it is Ad Week here in New York City, and Stephanie was on a panel on Monday with Dr. Oz, and she did a fabulous job. Thanks, Corey. So proud of you. And the topic was was really great, as Stephanie was saying. Yep. So. And we have a blog post up today on the Social Fly blog. So check out our latest post, socialflyny.com, and you can see or learn all about how data and digital is, in our opinion, resurrecting TV. Totally. And if anyone knows how to resurrect TV, it's Chris Jenner. Oh my god. What a big week for the Kardashians. Sunday was the 10 year anniversary special, which was amazing. So many secrets revealed. Scott pretended to propose to Courtney. It was very dramatic. This. Yeah, I know. They talked all about their relationship. They were very open, which they haven't been for a long time. So I was really happy to see that. It was more open, less scripted? Yeah, it was, it was not scripted at all. Like, they were cursing and everything. They were drinking. It was great. Chris looked Stunning. I was wondering why Jules wasn't responding to my emails on Sunday night. <laughs> because now I, I was glued to the TV. Because Kylie, it, the news broke last week that Kylie Jenner was that last is week? pregnant. That was yeah. Last week? Because it was right before the premiere and everybody was freaking out like, oh my gosh, they did it again. Was she on the premiere, Kylie? She was, yeah, she was on, no, the premiere's this Sunday. Ah, she was on oh, the 10 year anniversary. Got it. She, was, she wasn't on for that much of it though, and she was kind of dull. But, well, I mean, that's kind of her. Now she's got something to talk about. She's definitely got something to talk about. A little one on the way. A little Travis Scott. This has been trending everywhere on social media. And it was trending even more when the news that Chloe is also pregnant broke last night as well with Tristan Thompson's child. On BuzzFeed broke I it. found out well, actually from TMZ you, broke it and then BuzzFeed. You were jumping up and down in the office. Freaking like, what is going on with you? <laughs> Do you know how many phone calls I received when Kylie got pregnant? I, I had like four phone calls. Why? I, 
because people know that I really love them. Do you think when you get pregnant you'll get that many phone calls? <laughs> no. <laughs> Everyone will be more worried about <laughs> this child's future. But I am so excited for the Kardashians. Four royal babies in 2018. This is definitely going to be the greatest year we've had in a long time. <laughs> and it's going to be like nonstop. January Kim, that surrogate, baby girl. Um, then it's then it's Kylie, Kylie and then it's Chloe. And How I'm, do you know the due dates of everyone? And wait, I've Kim's having a girl too. Kim's having a girl. And also, have you seen that Kanye? They have a surrogate, but Kanye's been gaining all this pregnancy I weight. I saw that meme. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. The memes last night were like, Kanye is pregnant now too, oh <laughs> which my is God. amazing. That I did see. Yeah, he is looking thick these days, but he can work it. Well, to keep up with more trends on the Kardashians, Jules will be back probably every week until every week. the baby boom is over. Yeah, I'm happy to come back and give a recap of the Do season. Do we know yet what Chloe is due? No, but probably March. It has to be March. It has to be March. Why? March Madness, y'all. Back Basketball. <laughs> we need back to back babies. Back to back to back babies. Yeah. Wait, and when is Kate Middleton due? I don't Hopefully care. Kate April. Middleton. April. I think it is April. I hope I it's think April. It is April. Hopefully, we're not giving fake news right now. We will confirm the due dates of all of the babies, <laughs> and Jules will be writing a blog about it Most and her feelings blogs. and a opinions. Memoir. <laughs> and she'll be back with more breaking social media Kardashian news. Give us your predictions. Who's Kardashian? baby is going to be born first and the prettiest and which one are you most excited about I'm most excited about uh, Chloe's I'm really excited for her she's I'm, wanted a baby for so long she has but I really want to see what Kylie and Travis Scott's child is gonna look like I'm curious I'm excited I'm, uh, so I'm excited for Kim's yeah, yeah, she deserves yeah, it. She's had such yeah. a hard time. I hope Chris gets pregnant. I'm excited for that too. episode, too. I'm actually still most excited for Kate Middleton. Honestly, the they're truth. just building the cast, the next generation exactly. of people. You've got to keep the show on for 10 more years. And speaking and of keeping the show on, we've got to keep the show moving right now, or we're going to yeah. talk about the Kardashians for 30 minutes. So thanks, Jules, for coming Anytime. on. And TTYL. she'll probably be back next week. If you want Jules back, share this episode. And yes. Show us love. And follow me on Instagram. Thanks. Follow Jules on Instagram <laughs> at Jules. M. Mahan. And I think we'll be posting that below. All right. Don't forget to start sharing this episode because you have a chance to win a red carpet manicure. This is an at-home manicure kit, and it's a gel manicure kit, so you can get your nails done quickly, and it'll last for a very long time. And you can do it yourself. And you're also entered to win a copy of Sarah, who you'll meet in just a few minutes. Her new movie that's being released, it is a horror film called Hell of a New Year. So the movie and red carpet manicure is perfect for your G&I, your girls night in. So start sharing this episode and you're entered to win. Now, Courtney, it is time to get to all of our big social media platform breaking news. First up, Twitter. Twitter has announced that it looks like they are going to be testing out a 280 character limit on Twitter, uh, up from 140. So if I do my math correctly, they're doubling it, which is, <laughs> I always, I always have to check my math with you. Yeah, but, but that was an easy uh, one. I yes, got that, that one. Was an easy, an easy one. So. And you know, Twitter had announced what was it back in 2015 that they might be increasing it to 10,000 characters, but that clearly got squashed and never happened. People were in an uproar on Twitter about that happening. But I think 280 characters is a good increase because it'll allow us not to have to start deleting certain letters and words, taking out punctuation. Now we'll be able to be more expressive in how we feel on Twitter, and we'll be able to communicate better and that's what Twitter has shared as to why they're doing it yes I love this update I thought Twitter was just too restrictive and it forced people to obviously use less words and then it made some tweets very very cryptic and you know how I feel about that I like to be very clear and concise and I don't like leaving things to the imagination or when other people do that like when me. people tweet you know today just could have been better dot 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 yeah why why just tell us what happened. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we're excited that hopefully this does roll out and we will be tweeting all about it once it does. Awesome. And then we can't do social live without talking about our favorite platform, Instagram. Uh, Instagram now has over 800 million monthly 
Uh, active. Monthly active daily users. Oh, wait. Monthly active users and 500 million daily active users. Sorry about that. Misread. And uh, this is up from just in April where they announced that they had 700 million monthly active users. So this just goes to show you that Instagram is building momentum. It's growing leaps and bounds and more and more people are using the platform. So this was very, very smart on Facebook's part to have purchased the platform years ago and it's just gonna keep on growing. And then uh, Instagram also told TechCrunch that it now has two million advertisers on the platform, which is up from one million in, in March. And we're seeing that too with our clients. Mm -hmm. More and more of our clients want to invest in Instagram advertising because it works. It definitely works because I learn about so many brands from ads that I'm targeted with and then I screenshot them and then I sometimes purchase them. So Instagram, you're doing a great job, keep it up. And another update they released this past week is you can now use face filters when you're live on Instagram Live. And maybe we can test that out right here and, and put it on a, Amber might be, Amber's gonna try and do that on our social play Instagram account right now, but I just went live a few minutes ago on, we're, we have it on, all right. So we're live on Instagram right now with face filters, so definitely test it out. And I think Instagram is going to keep innovating, and whenever Snapchat does something new, they're just gonna take the best of it and, and pull it. And it's really, really important for Instagram to keep innovating on the creative front, because that is what is keeping Snapchat very relevant right now, we'll have a Snapchat update for you in just a few. And Instagram also now lets you decide who can comment on your posts on Instagram. So if you go to your setting features on Instagram, and Kim is showing you on the screen right now what that looks like, you can select who you want to be able to comment, if you want to block people. And I think this is actually a good update on Instagram's part. It is rolling out to everyone slowly right now uh, because Especially if you're a celebrity or you have a really big account, you do get a lot of people who write things that might not be nice or they're spam they're posting spam on your account and this allows you to restrict that from happening. And there are a lot of times too where I see my favorite uh, Instagram influencers do live stories or uh, post about how they're being bullied and I think that they're going to love this update because People have a lot of negative things to say uh, on Instagram or Twitter, especially you know when you don't have to say it to their face. And finally for Snapchat. Yes, so Snapchat's big update uh, is sky filter. So now you can take a picture of the sky and then you can edit the sky to be uh, a different background. You can add special effects to it. It's very, very cool and uh, in, uh, Snapchat keeps innovating their creative capabilities, which is really keeping them relevant and makes me want to go actually back to the platform because they have better creative capabilities than Instagram. And I'm really, really advocating, I'm not giving up on this, I want Facebook to buy Snapchat and bring those creative features over to Instagram stories and make the world a better place. I don't think that, good speech, Courtney, good Thank speech. You. Thank I don't, you. <laughs> I don't think that they have to buy Snapchat in order to do that. Basically, Instagram doesn't even need an innovation department anymore. They can just see what Snapchat is doing and then no, build it out I a few months later. I you just want great. everything to be in one place. No, the reason that I'm saying that they should buy the capabilities because uh, Instagram can't get the Bitmoji feature. I think Snapchat owns that. They can make their own Bitmoji and called Instagram Instamoji. Instagram has had a, a good amount of time now, I think, to catch up to Snapchat's creative capabilities. And the filters on Snapchat are just so much better. So yes, Instagram can adapt and create all these features, but it's gonna take them some time. And in the world we're living in today, everyone's impatient. I want it right now. I don't wanna wait till next year. I want it now. Okay, what's <laughs> Veruca Salt? I don't know what that is. Who she is doesn't that? know? What's Veruca Salt? Did I say her name right? I said Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Will you walk in the chocolate factory? She wants I want it now. Well, I That's want it right now. <laughs> We're going to have to make you a, a little meme. All right, perfect. 
All right, well, those are all the big updates we have from the social media platforms. And now we're so excited to bring on a special guest. We were actually on her show a few weeks ago on Little Things. Everyone, welcome to Social Live, Sarah Priebus. Come on over. Yay. Yay. Did you get a full audience today? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to bring it back yes. up. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. We had so much fun on your show. Yes. What yeah. was it, a month ago, two months ago? Time flies. Uh, gosh, I don't even know anymore. The but... only way to find out is if we go on our Instagram and see when we post that photo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's the only way to remember things these days. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. I, I feel like my audience really liked learning about social media because they're on it so much, but they never really think about what goes into it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Well, tell our viewers who don't know about Little Things what Little Things is and yeah. a little bit about your show and what you do. Sure. So uh, Little Things is, pr the easiest way to describe it is a, a good news platform. So our target audience is women uh, about 30 to 60, um, and we just share positive stories, feel good content, um, and where I'm involved is in long form programming. Um, and that's where I think it's really interesting right now and where Facebook Live is heading. So what we had, we started originally kind of as a blog, we had these articles, you might have seen them across your Facebook page coming up and just simple articles or, you know, short videos that, that can go viral that you can share. They're, they're quick, they're easy. But now what's really interesting is that we're making shows. We're making shows. Um, and so we have, oh, I don't even know how many shows now. I would say over 10. Um, we have three that air every single day, uh, which is crazy. Three shows a day. It's a lot of content. It's a lot of content. And then some that are just, uh, you know, each day of the week. So my show in particular uh, is called Replay, and it's an interesting time for Replay right now because we're actually uh, undergoing, uh, moving into a season two. Um, and where we started was with season one was sort of a, a clip show because that's what our audience loved. Our audience loved these feel-good clips, um, you know, cute puppies and wedding dances. Um, and gender reveals. And I love all of those. And all I, share, of I, I always yeah. like and watch and share those. If videos. you don't watch it, your yes. mom probably watches it. That's, that's what I'm going to say about that. And so what, that, that worked for us. And that still works for uh, our morning show. But we want to uh, make it a little bit uh, more unique and have a little bit uh, of a, a different voice on this evening show now to separate it from the morning show that does that consistently every day. Um, and so we're moving into a more comedic uh, show, which still will have some of those video clips, but not rely on them so heavily. It's going to incorporate guests, some games, goofs and gaffs, that sort of thing. Um, so you'll still get your videos, and it's still going to be feel-good content. Like, it's bringing levity and lightness mm -hmm. to this world that might be a little difficult at times right now. So I think we all need that, and that's why it's, they're doing so well. I mean, mm -hmm. we have over 10 million followers on Facebook. I can't wrap my head around I'm that that's still. Unbelievable. But I mean, people want to hear the good stuff, you know, the stuff that humanity is doing well. And so I think that we found that um, and, and we're bringing it to people. And that's really, I feel really honored that I get to share good news every day I love with people. That. I always say the news is just so negative. Yeah. And there needs to be a place where people go to get positive positive news because a lot of good things do happen in the world you just don't hear about them mm -hmm. yeah uh, so I wanted to ask you what your experience has been with Facebook live uh, but and you kind of I can tell that to it a little, little bit more yeah, you, kind of um, answered that. you know and and some of the challenges mm -hmm. maybe in that and creating the long-form content so we have shows that are uh, more traditional live TV where uh, we have a show called best or hot mess where they test out um, new beauty hacks hacks in the kitchen stuff like that and you watch them do that live um, I talked about the clip show a little bit, Refresh in the Morning. Um, then we have the Daily Glow, which is similar to like The View, mm -hmm. where you have women talking about trending topics, um, they have guests on, um, but still all positive mm -hmm. stuff. Now, what is tricky, especially with some of these clip things, and I dealt with that firsthand um, for many, for like six months now, um, is that you need the rights mm -hmm. to show the clips, you need to license them. Mm -hmm. Um, and also you have to keep it live because the clips themselves aren't live. So how do you make it formatted for Facebook Live? And what we've done is by putting a box in the corner. So we're showing you the videos live. I'm reacting to them 
live in the corner, but the videos themselves are not live. And that's confusing sometimes for people when they're watching. And I've definitely had, uh, you know, viewers write in like, this isn't live. I saw this uh, three years ago. And I have to just remind them like, hey guys, this is the show where we just bring you my favorite clips of the day. So we're going to talk about them together, but they're old, they're new, they're a whole mess of things, but the clips themselves are not live. Do you find a lot of the clips yourselves or are other people sourcing them for you? Um, both. It's yeah. a mix of both. I'm currently working to license new content um, and working to license like whole YouTube channels, um, not just one video at a mm. time because um, that makes my job a little bit easier when reinserting them. And then people also like start to know people's dogs. Like yeah. They're like, oh, I want to see Fluffy again. <laughs> and I bring them Fluffy again, whatever it is. Um, so I find some of them myself, and then some of them we've already licensed. We have a whole database that we choose from, so it really just depends on my mood. And, you know, generally speaking, we try to make it so it's, you get a little bit of everything every day. It's not all puppy videos or something like that. No, I love it. Yeah. And you mentioned that today marks one year since your first appearance on The Ellen Show. Yeah! Can you? Amazing. And I've watched the clip already, but are we showing it, Kim? We're showing the clip right now? So people can see the clip right now. So Sarah was on The Ellen Show last year, but for a very special reason. Can you tell everyone how you ended up on The Ellen Show? Yes. It's a, okay, so this is, the moral of this story is that you, no job is ever too small, right? And that's what I think is important to take from this because it's really sort of um, jump-started my career. So I'm an actor. Uh, I submit myself for auditions all the time, every day. And I submitted myself for a job for what was described as a personal cleaning product. And it was spelled to read uh, the shinny hinny. And I was like, great, I've never done an infomercial before. This should be a really great experience. I'll learn how to do an infomercial. And I get, they, they cast from photos and reels, so there was no audition. And I get to set that day, which was in New Jersey, and I don't live in New Jersey, so it was a little bit of a hike to get there. And when I got there, I realized that the product was actually my shiny hiney. Um, and it uh, is a brush, and I wish I had one right now, but it's a brush that cleans your butt. That's what it is. Um, it's for people, you know, that have um, disabilities or maybe it's harder for them to clean that area. So it makes sense, but I still necessarily, I didn't want to be the face of that. However, the couple who was shooting the infomercial talked me into it. They were, they were lovely. They said they were going to do it tastefully, and I ended up staying. And Ellen DeGeneres found this infomercial uh, almost a year after it, we first shot it and turned it into Shiny Hiney Week. She had Kristen Bell on, Kate Hudson on, discussing the infomercial, the product itself. And then she rounded out that Shiny Hiney Week by calling me up and booking me on the show. Not Ellen personally, obviously. Her producer. Yes. What was that like when they it's called so, you? So this is crazy. So I had written on her page, because I was like, I need to get I need to get on this show. So I'd written on her page, hey, like, not the way that I planned on ending ended up on ending up on the Ellen show, but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> And they, they saw that, they contacted me, and it was a whirlwind. It was like, I mean, a, a 10 to 12 hour turnaround time. They called me up, I saw the number from Burbank on my phone, I was like, uh, yes, yes. They asked me a lot of questions, they, you know, make, they make sure you're gonna, you know, you're Ellen's brand. Right. That kind of leads us into our next yes. thing too. You know, like, I can't go on Ellen's show and personally promote myself as an actress, that doesn't make sense. But if I go on her show and talk about how grateful I am for the experience that one small job might lead to this amazing thing, that's Ellen's brand, you know? And that's how that happened, really. I watched this yesterday and I, uh, it was, you so thought it was fake. It was fake. Yeah. I couldn't believe that's that crazy. this product actually exists. It's, it's hilarious. Did their sales go through the roof? They did. They also sent me a lot, and I, this is, I don't have any I, left. I have they a lot of a questions ton. about it, but I'll ask you off the show. <laughs> on our, let's, have an, let's have an after show on Instagram. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they sent me a lot of shiny honeys. I've never actually used one. It's too bad we can't give away with a shiny honey. I, I looked for it last night. You don't have any? But I'm sure I can make it happen. You know what? We can throw, I can talk. Call if you need a shiny honey. If you need a shiny honey. I'm going to make it happen. I, I give you my word. Share this episode. We will get you a We're shiny We're going to add honey. it to your... Red carpet manicure yeah, pad. Get your nails you gotta feel clean when you gotta feel clean when you're doing your nails and watching yes. a horror film. 
Yes, you do. Absolutely. Or <laughs> I can't wait to see who comments and shares. Who really wants it? Who really wants the shiny honey? We'll be able to tell now. Hopefully, it's not you, mom. <laughs> Courtney's so, mom's definitely watching. You recently <laughs> won Best Actress at the European Cinematography uh, Awards for a film that you starred in. Yeah. Tell us about the film and what inspired you to take on this project? Um. Yeah. It's it's a another story of like. I don't know. I feel like you just got to take everything um, because you really don't know where it's going to lead. I wanted to, I had submitted myself for another project. I went into the room and I almost didn't go to this audition because I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not into the cheesy horror genre, honestly. And I was like, oh, I don't know. My mom was in town that day, just was making excuses. And I was like, you know what? This is not, I need to put myself out there. I need to put myself out there in any capacity because lots of people do like horror films. So I went to the audition, and the guys running the audition, who would be the director, the writer, the producer, were the nicest group of people. Like, so nice that I was like, I hope I book this, because they're so excited about what they're making that, like, I'm now excited to make this thing. And then I booked it, and then we shot it, and it was super fun, because I've never done anything like that, um, and we had to do special effects, and we played with... It was an experiment together. We played with... Um, I, there's a there's a scene where I get pulled back by this monster, and they had me on a um, what do you call it a dolly, and they were pulling it back that way, and I'm like falling all over the place. Were you scared? Oh yes, yeah. I was like, we are not doing this. <laughs> and you know, and we tried it, and they were really the, my safety was put first. But you know, we tried things, and it was just really fun. It was outside my comfort zone. It wasn't anything I've ever had to do like acting so scared. That's its own separate form of technique that I'd never really done before. So it was a lot of fun. The end, because they're so excited about their project, they're getting it out to all of these film festivals right now. So it's not out yet. If I, I will be posting about which festivals uh, it'll be uh, airing at. So if you want to support me, if it's, it's coming to your city, like feel free to go take a look at it. Otherwise, if you share this episode, when it is released, I'm going to be sending you a free copy. You're going to get the very first DVD. The very first the very DVD. Very first DVD. Um, it's a scary one. I'm not going to lie. Well, last question because we have to wrap up the show, but very important question. How do you think social media has really impacted the entertainment industry, and how have you adapted your own social media to, to keep up? Yes. So it's changed it a lot, a lot, a lot. And it's very frustrating, actually, um, because, you know, I went to acting school, I feel that I am qualified for a lot of these jobs that I'm going out for, but um, they, a lot of times when you're going to auditions now, they ask you to list your followings mm -hmm. on every platform. Um, I see it the most in hosting jobs, mm -hmm. um, and it's like one of the first things they ask and they, want to, and they want to see how many followers you have. So that's very frustrating. However, I feel that you can also make that work to your advantage. You know, um, if you're willing to play the game, then you can start to study up on how you can create a brand that people will follow and um, you can play the game and then you're in it. And so, you know, if you're willing to do the work, then you can make it work for you. So things that I have done in, um, to adjust, um, I had bought followers like a year ago, right? And on Instagram, right now, the way that the um, algorithm, algorithm yeah. works is it's engagement. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that my engagement isn't high. I'm never going to get featured. My, my stuff isn't coming up in people's pages. So I just deleted all of my ghost followers like a couple days ago. And it hurt. I went down from like, I went down like 7,000 followers. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so fulfilling now to see the real people mm -hmm. actually engaging with my content. So that was a, a huge step. Second step was creating, re recognizing what my brand is. And for me, that looks like um, going in and seeing what are other people seeing when they look at my page, right? And I saw that they were probably seeing this model girl, right? A mo like I posted a lot of model photos. Right. They're still up, but now I've pushed them down quite a bit. And that's not what I want to do. So why am I sending across this message that I want to be a model when that's not what I want to do at all. So I started posting sketches. I started posting behind the scenes stuff when I'm working at little things, um, photos with guests, all of the stuff that I want to be my career, I am posting that so that people understand that that's what I want. And I think that it's making a difference. I've gotten a lot of, um, you here you are at the house of yes. Yeah, well that's, that's so part of my brand is comedic and silly you just got a lot and like fun. Um, and so like, it's not, they don't always have to be these professional sketches. Yeah. They have to show 
my personality and the fact that I'm a goofball and that I'm willing to play. And that's really what's happening now. And I think the beauty of Instagram and social media in general is that, you know, you can, like, people are come. you can pitch shows now based on these things that you're doing. So Laura Cleary is a perfect example. If you don't know her, check her out. She has a million followers on Facebook. She was an actress first and she wasn't getting jobs. She was losing out to celebrities, to all this stuff, because um, they were more well known. So she started creating her own content. She's hilarious. And she's been pitching shows and she just had, she has her first show now. It's on Comedy Central. It's called The Laura Cleary Show and she uses Snapchat filters to create different mm -hmm. characters and that's her show, and she has yeah. her own show now. It's yeah, amazing. Brittany Furlan actually does that too, and I've been following her for like they're three friends, years. They're friends, the two now. of them. I see them oh, on really? Instagram. Yeah. yeah. They're, all, they're, all they're all friends with they're each other. They're all friends, and they I'm going to become friends with the them. If you're watching, I want to be friends with them. Is that your New, New Year's resolution? Yeah. <laughs> Early New Year's resolution. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the opportunities are endless, and you just have to be willing to have an open mind yeah. and be willing to do the work, I think. Exactly. Consistency is key. Yes. And those are amazing tips. And I think that wraps up our show. Thank you so much, Sarah, for yeah. joining us. We will be back next week with a new guest. So join us next week. And Thank don't forget to share this oh, episode yes. for your chance to win your girls' night in kit, a red carpet manicure set, uh, Sarah's new DVD. And, and merchandise. We've got... And the Little Things merchandise and possibly a shiny hiney. And so. a shiny hiney tank top. You know it you could be it. yours. So don't be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a good week. <laughs>